Hello everybody and welcome to a new Planet Zoo video where we are discussing the possibilities for new Latin America DLCs. Now I have done a very similar video before, about three months ago, a little bit before the fourth anniversary of Planet Zoo and the Eurasia Animal Pack came out. And in the original Latin America pack, I did include the collared peccary and a few other things too. But since then, I've had a few other ideas as to what could possibly be part of a scenery pack for Central America and an animal pack for Latin America for as a whole. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this video because we are covering two DLCs, which is a new one for me. So let's get into it. So beginning, we have the Central America pack. And to start off, we are going to talk about the animals. Our first animal and the flagship of the pack is the Central American Black-Handed or Joffrey Spider Monkey, a very famous primate and a very common one in zoos, using their tail as sort of a fifth limb to brachiate through the canopy. Brachiation is something that is no stranger to Planet Zoo anymore, as we've had the Siamang and La Gibbon for quite some time. So I think it's about time that another animal were to take advantage of this mechanic, and the spider monkey is the perfect example of another animal that can also brachiate. The next animal is one of Central America's most notable predators, the ocelot, a smaller cousin of the jaguar, and one of the most beautiful cats you could ever see, with its beautiful blotching and spots they are an eye-catching addition to any zoo. They are also one of the most adaptable cats from Central America, being found in forests of various kinds, grasslands, and even the deserts of southwestern United States. They are a very versatile animal that you could use in a whole variety of builds. Our third habitat animal is the Guyanan, or common squirrel monkey. And yeah, these animals are very common in zoos, hence the name, I guess, but that's not really why. But these guys would be a great addition to really spice up the Latin American primate roster alongside the spider monkey. Now, I know we've never really gotten two primates in a single year, but the squirrel monkey is very similar to the capuchin monkey, having very similar behaviors and way of movement. So if that... If Frontier were to instead give this animal like a free hanging tail rather than the curled tail of a capuchin, I think it could work really well. And these animals would be brilliant additions to the game and be able to be used in a variety of builds just as well. The fourth animal isn't actually too requested anymore because the new up, newly updated 2024 Essential Habitat Animals wishlist on the forums places the kinkajou quite low, much lower than it was previously. And as much as I would love to see it, there is another animal that could possibly alternate for it. And that, of course, is my beloved bush dog. These little canids are from the Amazon and are being discovered readily in southern Central America, in Costa Rica and Panama. They are one of the most ancient species of canid, being found in the Pleistocene as well, alongside Smilodon and various other ancient South American megafauna. And they are pretty common in many European zoos and occasionally in some American institutions as well. And I would personally love to see them as it would diversify the South American roster as we would have both the tallest canid on the continent and one of the shortest. Given this is a scenery pack, we are going for the walkthrough exhibit slot with the green-breasted mango hummingbird. And there are potentially other hummingbirds that could fit the, fit the roster as well, acting similar to the butterflies from the Grasslands Animal Pack, giving us five to work with in the walkthrough exhibits. But the green-breasted mango is certainly one of the most notable species of the region, and I think it's a perfect pick for a Central American DLC. Moving on to some of the architecture, we have Mayan-inspired architecture, so one of the ancient civilizations that once inhabited Guatemala, I believe, and some other countries. There's also other bits of Mayan architecture. This looks like Yavin 4. For any Star Wars fans, you know what I'm talking about, but it would be cool to have full-on towers um, coming out of the jungle, and I think that would be a really cool 
scenery piece. Another bit of architecture that could inspire the scenery is that of Aztec architecture. This particularly coming from the city of Tenochtitlan, one of the most notable cities of Aztec history. And there are lots of bright colors and artworks here that would be brilliant to see, especially that archway that you can see down in the right bottom right corner. That would be very cool to see in Planet Zoo. And Aztec architecture is a beautiful piece of work. And I would certainly love to see that in the game. Moving on to some of the foliage, we have mahogany, which is one of the most expensive wood products in the world. And it would be nice to have another kind of South American tree as well. Another notable species is the traveler's palm, one of the most iconic species of tree that I, I can think of. They are, have a very distinct look, looking much like a fan. And yeah, they would be a brilliant addition to any enclosure I would build because they are a very beautiful tree. A smaller flower is the red ginger, another species of plant from Central America that would make an eye-catching addition to any habitat. And one of the more, in, more notable and characteristic plants of the Central American rainforest is the tree philodendron a species that would really add to filling in the space left in enclosures when you fill them up with other plants and scenery pieces. They're a good gap filler. Now we move on to the Latin America Animal Pack, my personal preference. But hey, if we were to get both, that would be spectacular. So let's look at what I've got in the Latin America Animal Pack. Now I've worked to not include any crossovers just in case we were to get both. So let's jump in. Starting with, oh well, of course the animals, as this is only an animal pack. We have the black and gold howler monkey, one of the largest primates in South America and one of the most requested. I think it might actually be the most requested animal on the wish list. And yeah, you can see they are a very impressive animal and have one of the loudest voices of any land animal. The males are distinct with their black fur, with the females being a beautiful golden color. So there's great sexual dimorphism there and would add to a great diversity of colors in your exhibits for them. South American coatis have been one of the most requested animals in the game for a long time. With their distinct ring tails and unique sniffing behaviors, I think the South American coati would make a very unique addition. And I'd personally love to see these guys in Planet Zoo. I think Frontier would really nail them. Our third animal is the spectacled bear, one of the most notable animals of the Andean mountains and would make a very unique addition to South America's roster, being the only bear found on the continent. The last living descendant of the short-faced bear, some of the largest land predators of all time. These guys, however, are largely herbaceous bears, feeding on a variety of fruits and leaves. And these guys would be a great addition to the game to really spice up the bear roster as they are one of the most unique in existence. The second primate slot for this pack is the Golden Lion Tamarind, a striking little monkey from the Atlantic forest of Brazil. They would be a great addition as they are perhaps the most colourful of the tamarinds and the marmosets as they are all under the same family of Calotrichidae. And I was originally putting these guys as a possible walkthrough exhibit option, being able to get a whole variety of marmosets and tamarinds at the same time. But I think getting the golden lion tamarind as a habitat animal is a much better option because then once we get the golden lion tamarind, the modders can go crazy with all the other members of the family. The southern tamandua is one of the other unique animals of this pack, also known as the lesser anteater an arboreal species of insectivore that is found in the trees while their giant cousins are found on the ground. These guys would be very easy to make if another feature that we'll speak about later is implemented in the same update. I, you, I think you can guess what it is because I've talked about it before. Another animal that would be pretty simple to make is the greater rhea, an animal that would take advantage of perhaps the emu rig and is one of the largest birds on the continent, if not the largest bird. They are a very characteristic animal of the Cerrado grassland and Grand Chaco shrublands. And yeah, these guys would be a great addition to any grassland South American habitat, living alongside 
beds, tapirs, capybaras, perhaps even giant anteaters and maned wolves. And our next option, the Patagonian Mara, another highly requested species and another rodent from the continent, a close cousin of the capybara inhabiting the Patagonian steppe. They are very common in zoos and commonly kept alongside capybaras, greater rears, maned wolves, giant anteaters, guanacos, greater rears, all sorts of other animals. They get along with a lot of species. And I would love to see these guys in the game as they would also have a unique rig as they are unlike many other animals. The green anaconda is our first exhibit option and one of the most notable animals from the Amazon River as these snakes are largely aquatic and are also very large, the largest specimens getting up to over 9 metres in length. So the 4x4 four four exhibits would probably not be suitable for them. Maybe getting their own unique exhibit would be very cool and give the green anaconda some its own identity in the game. Another cool species of reptiles, the plumed basilisk, also known as the Jesus Christ lizard, as this lizard is known for running across water due to its lightweight and splayed toes, allowing it to run across water with ease to escape from predators. The eyelash viper is one of the most striking snakes of Central America with its bright golden coloration, and they are also known as one of the only snakes that can catch a hummingbird lying in wait around flowers where hummingbirds frequent, and catching them mid-air. These snakes would make a striking addition to any exhibit. One of the most notable amphibian species is the Amazon milk frog or Mission Golden Eye tree frog. Their blue and brown coloration is no mistake as they are a very beautiful, beautiful frog and their bright colors are of course a warning as their skin is poisonous. So these guys would be a very unique addition as we haven't had a frog for a long time. And I would certainly love to see this species added as they are a very intricate species. Another beautiful frog is the dying poison dart frog, one of the most famous species of the, of the group, often shown with blue coloration or black and yellow going over the blue. Either way, they would be one of the most variated poison dart frogs in the game, having all sorts of variations and patterns. And I think these guys would be a welcome addition. Another welcome addition is one of my favorite lizards, the caiman lizard. These guys are one of the only semi-aquatic lizards in South and Central America and the only semi-aquatic tegu, I believe, as the other tegus largely spend a lot of time on land. And this guy is quite colourful too, so it'd make a very co cool addition to the exhibits. Moving on to the free update. We start with the foliage with the walking palm. The cacao tree, also known as the cocoa bean, where chocolate is largely made from. The pompous grass, a very famous grass species. Cerrado golden grass. The mariche palm would make a great addition to any Cerrado habitat. I think the pineapple would also be a cool addition as their plants and the fruit would be a great addition to many habitats. Enclosure ceilings and barrier stretch points to create unique enclosure shapes used using steel netting, mesh, chain link and camo netting can work well, like, much like the climb proof module. And with these stretch points, they would come immediately with a, with a support beam that could work well and a ring around, just like you can see in the image here, that gets the netting to stretch the way that you want it to. And it can work for some very unique enclosure shapes. And I think that would be a really cool addition to give the enclosures a bit more variety. Something else that can add more variety is also having new climb proof barrier options, such as electric wiring or mesh that, curves, that will curve inwards and also at an angle. And I think that would be a really cool addition to making more realistic mesh fences. Hanging trackways for primates that can be stretched between climbing platforms, both being as like a ladder-like pathway and others being a rope to break in and swing along. Perhaps even another version that has two ropes for the apes to use their hands and feet to move along them a bit safer. As well as rounded and rectangular mesh and steel tunnels that can run over the paths with supports that work just like paths. 
but for primates instead they can be placed between barriers. There could also be larger arching and straight tunnels for larger animals like tigers, leopards, snow leopards, gorillas, and other large arboreal species to have a similar method to cross over the paths and give guests a stunning view of the animals. Various modular hammocks that can be placed as part of climbing frames for multiple arboreal species like cats, primates, and bears would also be a welcome addition. The addition of climbing to the pangolin would also be beneficial for making the implementation of a tamandua much easier, as both these insectivorous animals behave in a very similar way. And you could almost argue they could be an example of convergent evolution, evolving very similar features to adapt to a similar ecological niche. Another major update would be the giant anteater remaster. The South America pack added the giant anteater originally, but with current quality, I think Frontier could give this animal the justice it deserves and make it the magnificent animal that it is. Speaking of magnificence, the Jaguar, also in the same pack, could also use a remaster to look much closer to the beautiful animal that you can see in real life. And I think it would be a a perfect animal to round out this this update video. And so that is the Latin America and Central America pack. And yeah, let me know what you think of this idea. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, I mean, I'm sure most people would like it as we are dying for some new South American animals. As we currently lack a lot. As you can see, we have a lot to choose from. And yeah. Let me know what you think of this video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Probably going to be doing a redo of the Alpine Animal Pack as well, and perhaps even discussing a Tundra Pack, who knows. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.